Okay, here we're going to look at this classic result from elementary number theory. So it says that suppose that a and b are natural numbers, then there exist x and y in the integers such that ax plus by is equal to the GCD of a and b. So let's do an experiment first to get an idea for um, the validity of this statement and to see where we might go with the proof. So let's consider the case when a equals... 12 and B equals 15. Good. So now let's take um, X and Y and then we'll look at AX plus BY. Great. So let's say first we have 0, 1. So that's obviously going to give us 15. And then 1, 0. So that's obviously going to give us 12. And now let's look at some combinations. So if we take um, 1, negative 1, that'll give us negative 3. If we take negative 1, 1, that'll give us 3. Um, notice if we take uh, negative 2, 2, that will give us 30 minus 24, which is 6. Um, notice if we take... Um, negative 3 and 3, that'll give us 45 minus 36, which is 9, and so on and so forth. So notice that we are able to achieve positive and negative numbers doing um, this process. And furthermore, it looks like the smallest positive number that we're able to achieve is in fact the GCD because as it's easy to check, the GCD of 12 and 15 is 3. Another thing to notice um, is that every number that it exists as a linear combination of 12 and 15 is actually a multiple of the GCD of 12 and 15. Look, we're only getting multiples of 3 over here. So that should give us some motivation for how to start the proof. So let's consider this set. So let's consider the set S, where S is equal to all linear combinations AX plus BY. Uh, as x and y vary over all of the integers but subject to the condition that ax plus by is bigger than zero. Good. So now notice that uh, ax plus by is in general an integer but since we're taking only parts of this that are bigger than zero, this is going to be a subset of the natural numbers. And furthermore, um, we notice that A and B, for instance, are elements of S. Just taking X to be 1 and Y to be 0 or vice versa, um, which tells us that S is a non-empty set. Great. And then, by the Archimedean principle, which says that all subsets of the natural numbers that are non-empty achieve a smallest element, we know that there is a minimal element of S. So by the Archimedean principle, there exists a minimal element of S. So let's set D equal to this minimal element of S. So D is very suggestive of what we're getting, which will in fact be the GCD of A and B. Okay, good. So I'll clean up this part of the board where we did our example, and then we'll finish off this proof. Okay, so now we're ready to continue. So let's recall we uh, built this set S, which is the set of all integer linear combinations of A, X plus B, Y, under the condition that A, X plus B, Y is positive. And then we set D equal to the minimal, minimal element of that set. So now what we need to do is claim that D is in fact the GCD of A and B. So first we'll show that it's a common divisor of A and B, and then we'll show that it's the greatest such common divisor of A and B. 
Okay, good. So uh, let's notice that d equals ax0 plus by0 for x0, y0 in the integers. And this comes from the fact that D is an element of S, and everything in S is of this shape. So we'll let X0 and Y0 be the corresponding X and Y that achieve this value of D. Okay, great. And so um, now notice that let's uh, claim that D divides A. So um, first we'll do this by contradiction. So let's suppose that D does not divide A. So if D does not divide A, then we can use the division algorithm on A and D. So we can write A equals D Q plus R with R is between zero and D. Good. And notice, we let r strictly be bigger than 0 because we're doing this towards a contradiction. We're supposing that d does not divide a, which means there is, in fact, a remainder. Great, so now what we want to do is put this value of a into this equation. Um, or, sorry, we want to multiply this equation by q um, and then... Um, insert this into this equation. So if we multiply this equation by Q, so let's say this is 1, so 1 multiplied by Q will give us the following, DQ um, equals AQX0 plus BQY0. Good. But now we can write dq as a minus r, so that tells us that a minus r equals a times q times x0 plus b times q times y0. Good. But now that allows us to write r as a linear combination of a and b. So let's see what linear combination of a and b it is. It is 1 minus x0q is the coefficient of a, and then minus uh, q times y0 is the coefficient of b. So we get that. But now notice that r is strictly less than d, uh, which tells us that r first of all, is an element of S because it's bigger than zero, and R is strictly less than the minimum of the elements of S, but that's a contradiction. So that contradicts the fact that D does not divide A, so in fact, D does divide A. Um, so now that we have D divides A, so with an exactly similar method, we can show that D divides B, and so I won't do that. It's exactly the same as this. So now we know D divides A and D divides B. So D is a common divisor of A and B. And now what we want to show is that D is the greatest such common divisor. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so I've erased the board, and just to summarize where we are, we're claiming that D is the GCD of A and B. We said D was equal to A X naught plus B Y naught, um, where X naught and Y naught are elements from the integers, and we knew that that had to be the case because we took this from the element S, and this is the one of the rules of being inside S. And then we just proved uh, carefully that D divides A, and through a exactly an analogous proof, we could prove that D divides B. So in other in other words, D is a common divisor of A and B. And now we want to show that it's the greatest common divisor of A and B. So how we'll do that is we'll take another common divisor of A and B and show that that in fact divides D. So um, let's let C uh, in the natural numbers be um, such that C divides A and C divides B. Great. And so now since C divides A and C divides B, that means that C divides AX plus BY for all X and Y in the integers.
And so um, that's a that's an easy result that's just built off of the definition of divisibility. So if you have a number that divides two numbers, so C dividing A and B, it divides any linear combination of those two numbers. So in particular, C divides A X naught plus B Y naught which is uh, the same thing as saying that C divides D. So let's see what we have. We have D as a common divisor of A and B, and then if we take another common divisor of A and B, C, then C divides D. So what that means is that D is indeed the, common, the greatest common divisor of A and B. Okay, great. So... Uh, through our experimentation at the very beginning of this video, we saw a way to write the GCD of 12 and 15 as a linear combination of um, 12 and 15. So I'll just uh, recall that we had 12 times negative 1 plus 15 times 1 equals 3. And 3 is indeed the GCD of 12 and 15. Now, in general, the strategy that you use, you use is the extended Euclidean algorithm. And I have a couple videos on the channel for um, doing this with the extended Euclidean algorithm. So I'll let you guys check those out for examples. Okay, so this is the end of the proof.